All right, well, I better get out of your hair. What hair? I mean, I better leave you alone, let you get back to what you were doing. Oh, okay. Do you get my drift? What now? Who's drift? I mean, do you understand me? Sorta. Maybe it's time for me to teach you five new expressions. Only five? Isn't that a drop in the ocean? Hey, stop reading my notes. G'day you mob, welcome to this lesson. Today, I am gonna teach you five new expressions in English that's gonna help you sound much more natural when you speak it. If you don't know me, I'm Pete. I'm the host of Aussie English and I've been helping people level up their Australian English for over half a decade now. So if your goal is to take your English to the next level, this is the podcast and YouTube channel for you. Before we get started, guys, don't forget you can grab today's worksheet. It's linked down in the description below so that you can download it follow along, do the exercises, and really rapidly improve your English. And when you sign up to get this worksheet, you'll also receive all of my future worksheets for other English lessons just like this. Also, every single expression that we cover today has been covered in its own unique episode on the Aussie English podcast. So you can go and listen to that episode if you wanna learn more about any of these specific expressions. All right, without any further ado, let's begin. Number one, to get out of someone's hair to get out of someone's hair. This expression means to stop being a nuisance to someone, to leave someone alone, to stop disturbing someone and let them get back to doing what they were doing. So if I pop over to my mum's house, uh, I'm unexpected, she didn't realize I was coming and she's doing a puzzle. After I say g'day and maybe, you know, leave her a present, she'll probably be like, look, I wanna get back to the puzzle and I'll be like, I'm gonna get out of your hair. I'll let you get back to your puzzle. See your mum. I'll get out of your hair. Imagine your neighbor drops in, comes over for a chin wag, wants to have a cuppa, right? A cup of coffee or a cup of tea. After five or 10 minutes of just catching up, the neighbor might say, all right, it's been good to chat, but I'll get out of your hair. It's been good to chat, but I'll get out of your hair. I'll let you get back to doing what you were doing. I'll stop being a nuisance. I'll get out of your hair. Expression number two, get the drift or to get someone's drift. Do you get my drift? To get the drift. This is a good little informal expression, meaning to understand the basic meaning of what someone's saying. So if you get someone's drift, you understand what they're saying. Here's two examples. Imagine you're a school teacher explaining a math problem to your class. Everyone in the class looks a little perplexed. They look a little confused, but one student gets it. They understand what's going on. So if you ask this to the class, does anyone get my drift? One student might put their hand up and be like, I got it. I got the drift. I understand what's going on. You can also use this when kind of subtly suggesting something, right? So maybe you're a young man and there's a neighbor's daughter who's fairly attractive and you've been dating the daughter on the sly. Maybe a friend comes and says something like, are you two an item? Like, are you guys going out? If you want to be subtle, you might say, we're pretty close if you get my drift, right? If you understand what I'm saying, we're pretty close, wink, wink. Expression number three, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out, like literally, that would be, I guess, to punch yourself in the face and go unconscious. But here, it's an invitation for someone to do what they've asked permission to do, for them to have a good time, for them to enjoy themselves. Ah, knock yourself out. Two examples, someone comes over to your house for a barbecue, right, a barbie as we call it in Australia. They walk in the door and they say straight away, g'day Pete, how's it going? And then, you know what, I'm thirsty. Mind if I grab a beer, right? Do you mind if I grab one of your beers out of the fridge? You might say, of course not, knock yourself out, right? You're saying, of course it's not a problem. Go get a beer, have fun, enjoy yourself, do it, knock yourself out. Example number two, maybe your daughter comes home one day. She's had her license for a few months. She says she wants to borrow dad's car, right? Mom, dad, can I borrow your car? I want to go see my mates. If it's not a problem, if it's okay, you will just say, yeah, knock yourself out. Here are the keys. Knock yourself out. Go drive and see your mates. Knock yourself out. Alrighty guys, before we continue, can you do me a teensy wincy little favor? If you're watching this video and you're enjoying it, getting value out of it, can you give the like button a little boop just to show the magical YouTube algorithm that you're enjoying it and hopefully get it to show this video to other English learners just like you. It really helps small channels like mine. Cheers. All right, expression number four, a drop in the ocean. A drop in the ocean. If something is a drop in the ocean, 
it is a very small amount of something that is unlikely to make much of a difference. Two examples. Imagine you're saving up all the money in the world that you can get your hands on so that you can buy a Ferrari, right? It's been your dream. Since you were a kid, you wanna buy a Ferrari. You wanna be the proud owner of a Ferrari Dino, for example, okay? So you've been saving your money. One day a mate comes over and says, you know what, I wanna help out. They write you out a check and they say, here's 50 bucks. Because the Ferrari is gonna cost probably, what, half a million dollars? $50 is just a drop in the ocean. It's not gonna make much of a difference at all to your savings and when you can buy the car, it's just a drop in the ocean. Example number two, you've been trying to read the book Game of Thrones, right? The entire series, you're trying to get through it, but you're only reading a paragraph every single day. Considering the entire series is thousands of pages long, every single paragraph that you read is just a drop in the ocean. It is a very, very, very small amount of the total number of paragraphs in the entire series. Each paragraph is just a drop in the ocean. Alrighty guys, and expression number five, the last one here, you made it to the end, well done. To be on a roll. To be on a roll. Now here the idea is rolling, right? As opposed to say a roll, which in Australia is kind of like a round sandwich. If you're on a roll, you're on a streak of success or good luck, right? You've been achieving some things again and again and again, doing really well, you've had good luck, you've been on a roll. Two examples. One day you go out fishing and you weren't sure which bait was gonna work, so you just grabbed the, I don't know, some worms. You've been chucking them on your hook, casting your line out, and every single time the line hits the water, boom, a fish jumps on the line, you reel it in, you catch a fish. You do it again, you catch another fish. If you keep repeating this process and having good luck, you're on a roll. You're doing incredibly well. You've caught so many fish, you're on a roll. Example number two, imagine you've gone to a party, right, with all your friends and family, and for one reason or another, you keep saying things that upset people. You don't mean to, but you keep upsetting people. You upset your sister, you upset your father, you upset your grandmother. Someone might come up to you and just say, Pete, look, just stop talking. <laughs> you're on a roll, right? You've had here a lot of bad luck, the opposite of success, repeatedly. So it's almost used sarcastically here. In fact, it is used sarcastically. It's like, Pete, just stop. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. Wow, you are on a roll. All right, before we get into the big exercise at the end here, guys, I'm gonna show you the expressions we just went over on the screen here. And I want you to pause the video quickly and write your own comment using one or more of these expressions down below. This is a great way of using what you've just learnt to hopefully keep it in the noggin here, in your brain, okay? So hit pause and I'll see you in a jiffy. Welcome back. All right, so today we're gonna go through a little exercise here with the expressions that we've just learnt. In the last episode, we focused on turning statements into questions using inversions. Click the link up here, guys, if you wanna go and check that video out after we're done. But in today's exercise, Let's focus on changing the following sentences from the future tense will plus the verb to is, are, am plus going to the verb, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So we're changing between the two different future tenses. For example, I'll go home soon becomes I'm gonna go home soon. So you can either anticipate the change that I'm gonna make and try and conjugate the sentence yourself and then check the answer. So I'll say the first sentence, give you some time, and then I'll say the second sentence and you can check if you got it right. Otherwise, just use this as a listen and repeat exercise where you focus on my pronunciation, intonation, rhythm, stress, everything like that, and you just read out every sentence that I say, okay? So you ready? Let's go. All right, I'll get out of your hair. All right, I'm gonna get out of your hair. Little note there. Did you notice how I am going to changes into I'm gonna, I'm gonna. When we speak with connected English, with contracted English in Australian English, we can say I'm gonna. You can say I'm gonna as well, but quite often we'll just contract it all down to I'm gonna. I'm gonna get out of your hair. Will he get the drift?
Is he going to get the drift? Good work. So the interesting thing here is you may notice H deletion. Will he becomes Willy. Willy. Will he get the drift? And with the next sentence, is he becomes Izzy. Is he going to get the drift? Will he get the drift? Is he going to get the drift? I think they'll just knock themselves out. I think they're going to just knock themselves out. Some connected speech in there. Themselves out. Themselves out. We link that z sound at the end of themselves to the start of the word out because it starts with a vowel sound. I think they're going to just knock themselves out. It'll only be a drop in the ocean. It's going to only be a drop in the ocean. You'll notice some more linking there. B uh, B uh, we link those two vowel sounds E and R uh, with a Y sound. Be a, be a, be a, be a drop in the ocean. And then with drop and in, because drop ends with a consonant, in starts with a vowel sound, drop pin, drop pin. Be a drop in the ocean. Be a drop in the ocean. And it happens with the ocean as well. We link it again with another y sound. The ocean, the ocean. Be a drop in the ocean. Be a drop in the ocean. Lots of connected speech there today. And the last one, guys. If that happens, we'll be on a roll. If that happens, we're going to be on a roll. Same thing here with be on a roll, right? There's lots of connections in there. Be on, be on, using that Y sound. On, on, the A sound becomes a schwa. It links to the N at the end of the word on. Be on, be on, be on a roll. Be on a roll. Be on a roll. Great job, guys. Don't forget, if you want to improve your pronunciation, check out my Australian pronunciation course. The link will be in the description below, or you can just go to aussieenglish.com.au forward slash APC. Don't forget to grab today's worksheet. And if you want to keep learning with me, you can also check out this video up here. See you next time.